Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Hood's Fishies. You would have seen that we've already gone and glued the plates on the tanks last thing. So we've left it a couple of days now. They've dried well and truly, I'm happy with that. Um, I made a bit of a mistake though. I decided just to try and take a razor blade and um, some cleaning vinegar against these just in the hope to try and get some of the calcium off um, and just make them look a little bit better. That ended up, as you might be able to see on this one, making it really nice and clear on the front glass. So that makes me feel like I need to take it to the next level. So I know I promised you guys that we'd go and put the tanks back in there and get the water back in there and get the fish back in now, but I kind of feel like I need to spend a bit more time just cleaning these up, getting them to look a bit nicer, and take it to that level before we get them back in there. So why don't you come along with me while we try and sort that out? So currently I have, you can't see down here, I might show you in a panning shot. Um, I've got some microfiber rags soaked in uh, vinegar, uh, cleaning vinegar. And I've just got that sitting there um, on the calcium for now, just trying to break that down. Um, I've had success on the lighter stuff, on the front glass of these tanks, which uh, have got nice and clear. But um, I'm not so sure about this heavy stuff. I have had it on good advice from Rumble, shout out to Rumble's Fish Room, that... I should try something called Barkeeper's Helper and that should get that off. So if I fail getting it off with the, the white vinegar, I'll um, tr give that a go because I really want to get these clean before we head them back into the fish room. Uh, but for now, I just want to show you um, how I'm going about getting this paint off these tanks so we can uh, either leave them clear or potentially repaint them. So first things first, we want a nice, fresh, clean razor blade. Next thing we need is we want a rag, we want water. You don't want a razor blade dry too often if you can help it. I mean, you can scratch the glass either way if you're not careful, but you know, you can scratch the glass with a rock. So for the sake of trying to get off yuck old paint, this is probably one of the best goes. So we've got lots of water on there. It's nice and clear. You got your clean razor blade, rest it flat against the glass and you just push and anything that's moist and attached to the glass should just just lift off like that. Just a nice clean push. And as you can see, we're just lifting it like that. And then you push it to the side, we've got a pile. We'll get rid of all that now. So I'm going to go through and uh, clean up the rest of this paint off these tanks and uh, we might do a bit of a time lapse or something just to show that going by us and then I'll meet you on the other side. And there you go, that's one side done. Um, this one I want to le keep leave soaking with the uh, white vinegar for a while to see if that affects the calcium. So I might um, throw this one back over there and pull a different tank over and we'll carry on and do some more. Alright, so you guys have seen me strip the first side of that tank over there that we're now resting just to see if we can't attack that heavier calcium deposits on it. So let's go ahead and um, strip the paint off the rest of these three tanks.
so there you go, three tanks stripped, completely paint free. Uh, as you saw, that was, wasn't too painful at all, it takes a little bit of time, not that much. Go easy with it, use a brand new razor blade, plenty of water just to keep lubrication up, nice smooth motions, and uh, you should be fine. I know a lot of people have a lot of trepidation about using razor blades on their glass tanks, but um, I know that as long as you use a fresh clean razor blade, um, you don't do, you know, do, don't do any gouging motions, just nice clean motions. Um, and lots of water, you, you're usually fine, you usually don't do any damage. I mean, for instance, we have a glass factory tacked onto the back of the stone factory I work in. I do a lot of, well, I don't do a lot, but I do a reasonable amount of glass CNC machining as well for them. Um, now, our glaziers, they go through razor blades like there's no tomorrow because we're making double glazed windows. Um, it's two pieces of glass, there's a gas pocket in between. It's like, you know, 30 mil wide once it's done, once it's filled with the inert gas. And uh, that inert gas, um, you know, like because it's all bonded and stuff, it can't come out. Any dirt on the inside of there, that, that's a window that needs to be returned because you can fingerprint anything, you can't get it out. And um, we've got a lot of calcium in the water in Perth, you know, that's why it's got a reasonable alkalinity to it. Um, and that leaves white marks. We've got softening units on the water and everything to deal with the glass. But the biggest thing I know is they use a lot of razor blades, plenty of water, just to keep that glass clean before it goes out. So. If professional glaziers are using razor blades on their glass to clean it, um, you can too. Um, just use your sense about it and uh, you'll be fine. You, you won't come in into problems. So let's get this first tank back up here and um, why don't we have a look at how that um, the vinegar is working on that calcium, uh, if it is working. If it's not working on the heart of calcium, I might have to switch to something else and uh, we'll see how we go from there. So let's get that one up here and have a look. Right, so let's see how these towels of vinegar have been working on the uh, calcium here. I don't know whether you guys can see that, but I think it's actually taken a fair bit. There's still some cloudiness here, but um, where it's wet with the vinegar, it's definitely done a bit. I mean, you can still see there's a lot of cloudiness here, but it used to carry a lot further down the tank. So that's obviously is working and reacting. Let's try it with a bit of a um, nylon scrubber on there. Yeah, it's lifting some of the cloudiness over there. Yeah, this is definitely going to work. It's um, going to be a bit time consuming just to get most of that calcium off, but um, as most of you would probably feel, it's probably better to um, actually get that done, get it off if you can, just for um, aesthetics at the very least, you know? It's nice to be able to see your fish, especially your fry when they're growing out. If you're trying to pick any ones that are special or you know that you might keep for a breeder or something like that, you want to be able to see in the tank reasonably well. Um, and seeing finite details or even like if there's defects in your fry and you don't want them to go out you know you, you, you don't want to you know develop a bad reputation for having um, you know sending out fry with obvious defects and stuff like that so you should always be checking you should always be removing you know ones that might have split gills or anything like that I'm just going to take a razor blade to the top of that calcium now just to see whether it comes up easier if it does then I'm just gonna to have to go around and bit by bit by bit work on each one so uh, let me just check this with a razor blade. Mm, the high up stuff still definitely seems stuck on. I mean, it's coming up over there. I won't know until it dries properly how cloudy it is because there's usually always still some cloudiness. But wetness, as long as it's clear under moisture, um, it's usually gonna be pretty good. I mean this is pretty high up now, we're, we're right in the band of where you're not gonna really have any water but still while we're at it it's always nice to uh, try and attack it if you can. Yeah that's coming up at the top with a razor blade as well. The razor blade will usually sort of tell you a little bit as well because over the glass that's clean it just slides and then you hit the porousness of uh, calcium deposits and you can you can feel it 
That's pretty good, man. There you go. Cloth soaked with uh, vinegar. Sit it on the calcium for a couple of hours. Come back. Scrub it with a razor blade. And you'll get most of it off. That's one side. Let me flip that up and um, see how it looks through the camera. It's not too bad. It's, I mean, it's pretty hard to see through the paint, so we'll um, leave it at that. So, um, let's strip the rest of the paint off this tank, okay? So I don't know how well this comes across on the camera, but this is the side of the tank. We've just stripped all the paint. We hit this with the uh, the white vinegar, and we've we've soaked there. There's still a little bit of cloudiness here, but generally the paint's clear. Whereas if you look behind it on the sides, there's a thick band of calcium buildup from the last like 12, 13 years of being a fry tank. And sometimes you just leave it because there's no fry in there, and I drop too low. That's laziness on my own behalf where you really should stay on top of it all the time and then you don't have this problem. But you can see the vinegar's really worked. So I think I'm going to have to definitely take the time to go around, soak it all in vinegar, hit it like that. Um, I might definitely try that uh, barkeeper's helper that everyone keeps talking about. But that's going to take a fair bit more time. So I think you're going to have to bear with me and we'll cover that on the next episode. So there you go guys, that's how I go about stripping the paint off my tanks. If you have a similar project at home, don't be afraid to undertake it. You can use some of these simple methods. I'm sure there are other ways to go about it, this is just the way I go about it. So I um, just thought I'd share that with you. I hope uh, people learn something from it and um, maybe it you know, helps them think about undertaking their own tasks. That's the whole point of this project, you know, I, a lot of people are setting up new fish rooms this now. I have an old fish room that's sort of run down and in, in need of, you know, uh, repair and upgrade. So this is the process I'm going through and I figure I can show people just some of the ways that I'm going about doing that. So we've got all four tanks stripped of paint now. Fantastic. Just got to get the calcium off now. And, um, but we'll cover that in the next episode. It's going to take a long time to soak and sort all that out. So we'll take a couple of days to do that. Um, the one thing I want to hear from you guys in the comments should we paint these again? Should we get out some spray paint, mark it off and just repaint them? Uh, maybe just the backs and bottoms. Let me know about that in the comments. That would be great to know. I'd love to think what pe people's thoughts on that. So um, cheers for your time. I hope you got something out of this. And I'll catch you next time on the next episode of Hoods Fishies. Catch you guys.